Okay, so uh, just to recap, like I mean, Cypress can be used by developers and QA engineers as well. Uh, and uh, we can automate any kind of application, whether it's a React, uh, Java, AngularJS, Node.js. So irrespective of the programming language, we can automate, automate any kind of uh, I mean, programming language. Okay, so why we use Cypress for our other automation framework? So you, you, you will get a question like, we have Selenium, Protractor, uh, Playwright, so many frameworks in the industry. But why we choose like Cypress means, Cypress is a JavaScript test automation solution for web applications, API, DB, and visual testing. So as I earlier mentioned, we can automate uh, all the layers of testing. That's why like we prefer a single framework for all the components of testing. And all-in-one testing framework provides such a, yeah, it comes with the Chai session library for uh, to implement the auto, I mean, assertions. And uh, we can do mocking and stuffing as well. We can, I mean, we can use the like a Cypress uh, stuffing concepts and uh, without Selenium. So here the thing is like we are we are not using Selenium web driver. So I mean the thing is like Selenium web driver mostly use the W3C protocol, right? So here we use the Node.js proxy, but we are not uh, using the Selenium web driver. Uh, and it comes with Mocha test framework. So the thing is like it comes with inbuilt everything. So Mocha test framework. Uh, chai session library screenshots videos uh, and uh, all the reusable components yeah hi vinak uh, hi jay uh, uh, yeah sorry to interrupt you but uh, uh, yes. can you just please brief explain about the visual testing sure so visual testing means for example if you want to check the uh, layout of the application so for example let's take any of uh, that website yeah Okay, so uh, let's say, um, let's take an example of iProperty.com. So uh, we, we need to make sure the CSS elements, the button should be uh, blue color and uh, the layout should be in the correct format and the, uh, I mean, the, the images should be visible to the user. So if you want to uh, verify the CSS elements of the website, then we, uh, we can use the visual testing. Okay, so in visual testing, do we have to write any uh, CSS related scripts or JavaScript related scripts? Okay, so the thing is like, uh, uh, I mean, it comes with like a, one module called Cypress Visual Regression Plugin. So using okay. that plugin, uh, we don't need to write the scripts. Okay. I mean, like it's a, like a checkpoints. We can give the first one, so open the website. We can call mm -hmm. the like site dot check the checkpoints. Some checkpoints we can give. Uh, I mean, using the like those checkpoints, we can validate the CSS is, I mean, visible or not, and the images are broken. So for example, uh, it will capture the base images. So first time it will capture the base images. And second time when we do the regression, it will uh, it will compare the base images and regression images. So, so the, is there any other tool uh, which is supporting the visual testing or only for the Cypress? Uh, okay, so we have like, uh, I mean, Apple tools, Pepsi.com. So okay. there are like many tools. So for example, mm -hmm. so Pepsi.io. Yeah. <clears throat> so the thing is like, these are like a licensed, I mean, uh, tools, for example. So here you can see all in one visual uh, review platform. So we can check, uh, it comes with AI integration. So it will automatically capture the images and it will compare the base images and regression, I mean, uh, I mean the comparing the images. So it will show the like, uh, I mean, the, the resolutions and everything here we can see. So manual QA has been the only way to get insight into visual UI changes. So, but it's time consuming error prone with PC teams can deliver updates on time and keep up without sacrificing quality. So we can do the visual testing for different uh, layouts. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I'll show the documentation as well. Uh, please share the system sound so we cannot hear the audio. Okay, just a second. And also, are you recording for, for the same, right? For the entire session? 
devices uh, and yes, browsers out there, there there's just no way you can manually test across all of them. That's where Percy comes in. We make it easy to integrate visual testing for your web apps and components, no matter your stack or workflow. Just drop Percy snapshots into your existing test. Okay, so uh, that's a quick introduction about PC, and we have Apply tools as well. So, so it's a bit out of scope topic for today, but yeah, the, we have like a licensed tools. For example, here we can see so visually perfect applications with automated visual testing. So these uh, tools comes with the AI integration, visual AI. So we can integrate Cypress with the Apply tools per C, uh, and we can check the uh, visual layout of the. I mean, I mean, uh, excuse me. So uh, layout testing as well. And also one more question is: Can the can we uh, visual testing done by the Selenium web driver with Java? Selenium web driver with Java. Yes, we can do with Selenium as well. I mean, there are some other uh, I mean modules as well. If I'm not mistaken, so with Selenium. Uh, and one so, question, yeah. One what is the Cyberpress exactly? Which frameworks uh, basically uh, now in the market on Cyberpress frameworks level? Uh, you mean Cypress? Uh, Cypress only. Which frameworks in the market presently uh, as IT using? So, uh, if you ask me, like Selenium is still leading in some countries. If you ask me, in India, Selenium is like uh, many of the companies using. But if you go for like US, Europe, UK, Cypress is doing good. Now it is yeah, yeah, like yeah. they are migrating to my Canada, US, and uh, 15 regions, uh, mostly Cypress, Poland also now in the market. Yeah, Europe is totally migrating to Cypress. Yeah, because yeah. Cypress and has... Kotlin, yeah. Right. So because Cypress is like less maintenance and easy to set up the framework and uh, easy to learn as well. But coming to Selenium, we have to start from scratch, right? It takes a lot of maintenance work and uh, yeah, reusability also like le less scope. So that's why like uh, many companies migrating to Cypress, Cypress and Playwright. Mano, which technology needed for the Cypress? Uh, Cypress comes with JavaScript and TypeScript, two languages. Cypress and uh, JavaScript on their own? Uh, Another language? TypeScript. Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> I mean, if you are not, I mean, uh, if you are, I mean, new to the JavaScript, don't worry. Uh, during the sessions, I will cover like JavaScript basics and uh, uh, how to handle the JavaScript concepts as well. Uh, and TypeScript. And one, one last question. Uh, yes. Which ID is the best for the Cypress? So for Cypress, better to use the VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Okay. And uh, what is the in the sliceness? I don't know what the name. IntelliJ sliceness is an integrated one tool we have, right? In the market. Right. right. IntelliJ is recommended for Java only. If you go for like Selenium, IntelliJ or Eclipse is recommended, but if you choose like Protractor, Cypress, JavaScript frameworks, VS Code is recommended. Yeah. So like, uh, uh, yes, Selena, we have Q and A. Like, uh, yes. This a uh, this a workshop or like a demo only? So today I will show like a demo, and if you guys interested, we can cover the like a simple workshop as well. Sure, set, sure. up need, set up, set up, set up, set up, yes. So, you can continue. We will uh, question and answer after later, this. Later, we cover later questions. Yeah, no, no, no yes. worries. Like, uh, let me uh, yeah. I mean, complete the demo. So, after that, if yeah. you have any questions, so one by sure. one, uh, I will answer. Yes, sure, sure. Yeah. Thanks. No. Uh, okay, guys. So, yeah, how a Cypress work functionality means. So how does Cypress like and the thing is like Cypress is executed in the same run loop. So it's a bit theory part like uh, uh, please wait for a few more minutes. So behind Cypress is a Node.js server. So uh, for Selenium, we have a JSON protocol. In the, in the same way for Cypress, we have a Node.js proxy. So uh, the thing is like most testing tools operate by running outside of the browser and executing remote, uh, remote commands across the network. So the thing is uh, uh, Cypress execute in the local browser, but not the remote browser while coming to selenium selenium runs on the remote browser where we cannot interact with the browser while execution happening 
Okay, so Cypress takes snapshot of your application and enables you to time travel back to the state. It was, uh, I mean, it was in when command stand. So for while execution happening, it will capture the screenshots for us and we can uh, we can time travel for each command. I'll show the demo today, like how we can debug each commands one by one. Excuse me. Okay, so uh, the thing is like, what are the key features of Cypress? So first thing is mocking and stubbing. So by mocking the server response, it has the ability to test edge cases. So mocking means, so whenever we have like a uh, dummy server, so if we, uh, for example, uh, when we are automating like bank applications, so the servers will be not ready. So at that time we can create the mock server and we can like uh, create the mock test data and uh, we can test on the like mock servers between, uh, when, I mean, before the like production server is ready. Uh, at the same time, we can do the time travel uh, and uh, yeah, time travel means like we can uh, uh, debug the previous logs as well. So, uh, and flag resistance. So it automatically waits for commands and assertions before moving on. So the thing is like uh, Cypress script, uh, scripts are very stable comparing to other frameworks. So, uh, I mean, we can see the comparison like before, I mean, excuse me. So with other uh, like Selenium and spy stops and clocks. It can verify and control the behavior of function server response or timers. As earlier mentioned, we can like uh, create the mock data and we can check the response as well. Um, real time reload. So it automatically reloads whenever you make any changes to your test. So uh, for example, so when the scripts are like, uh, I mean, uh, uh, like for some tests are passed, some are failed. So we can debug it easily using the test runner and we can do the fixes in inst instantly, excuse me, so it uh, it will reload the like uh, I mean latest changes. So let me know if I I mean uh, if uh, if you guys catch up me with so the flow uh, or else if, if you want like uh, go a bit slow. Yeah, please go ahead. No issues. Okay. So uh, another good thing is like consistent results. So whenever we execute like a uh, Cypress uh, sw uh, test suites out of like a hundred times, it will mostly 90% will be stable until unless the test case is failed. So network traffic control. And the good thing about Cypress is uh, not only UI and uh, API, we can, uh, I mean, we can automate the network traffic controls. So, uh, and, I mean, and the Chrome Dev tools. So we can check the like console JavaScript errors and network logs as well. Okay, automatic waiting. So the uh, good thing uh, and the good feature of Cypress is so each command comes with the like uh, synchronization. So for example, most of the commands wait for four seconds by default. So Cypress have the uh, future by default, it's a wait for four seconds. Then only it will go to the next step until, I mean, for example, if, if element is loaded, so it will wait for the element, for example, login button to load, then only it will uh, go to the next step. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, screenshots and videos. So the thing is like, uh, uh, it comes with automatically when, whenever any test case fail, automatically it will capture the screenshots and videos for us. So we don't need to uh, define any function. So that, uh, that's the one of the good thing. And debugging is uh, readable error messages help you to debug quickly. So uh, using the test runner, we can debug easily. So where exactly it failed and what uh, uh, when error uh, it is showing. So any questions so far? So it supports only web and API? Uh, no permission. Like, uh, I mean, we can automate like a web API, uh, database and visual, visual testing mm -hmm. uh, and network capture controls. So multiple layers of testing. Okay, thank you. So not yeah. for Windows, right? Actually, I have one Windows application. Uh, so uh, will it work? Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, good question. So mostly, um, I mean, it was a developer for web automation only, but not for the Windows. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. So Windows means we, uh, we can use the WinApp driver, right? So WinApp uh, driver is the... Uh, yeah, actually, the we, we tried PyWin or two and uh, we have many other tools, but uh, it's not supporting. Even actually, we tried uh, for our project, uh, it's... Uh, Test complete as well, but uh, we application developed in Qt QML framework. So uh, QML is not supporting well. Uh, yeah, even I download plugins, I, I just did the POC also, but uh, yeah, but we we not succeeded. So any suggestion from your side? 
So, I mean, if you are specifically looking for Windows automation, uh, catalog yeah, studio. Yeah, QTQ ML widgets. Actually, my uh, I'm working for Continental Automotive India Private Limited. It's uh, uh, yeah, actually, it's desktop application. So it's a plug and play architecture. So we just add the plugins many. Got it, got it. So yeah, I mean we can use the catalog studio for Windows automation as well. So you can click it. Can if you don't mind, please mute yourself, Srikant. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I mean I please go ahead. When I... uh, yes, Parmesh. So you, you can give a try for Catalan Studio. So Catalan Studio also one of the I mean, robust for automation tool for Windows mm -hmm. web, uh, web automation API and mobile automation as well. So if you consider all the platforms, then Catalan Studio is recommended. Uh, is it uh, kind of open source or maybe we need to purchase? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like it comes with open source, but a uh, few uh, features only. But I mean, uh, they have like license version as well. If you go for like a CACD platform, then you mm -hmm. have to uh, buy the license, yes. Okay, Catalan Studio, right? Okay, Catalan I'll, Studio, I'll, yes. okay I'll, I'll explore the tool. Thank you. Yeah. So, any other questions, guys? Uh, Vinayak, actually, I joined the meeting late. Sorry. But uh, I have one question. If you haven't yes, covered, sorry. if you are about to cover, you can skip. So, actually, uh, can we? Uh, do we have support of page object model in Cypress? Right. So page object model, we can, uh, I mean, uh, develop with any framework, not only Selenium as with Cypress also can do, uh, and the play rate also we can implement. So yes, it's possible. Yes. Okay. So you mean to say whatever the, the default framework that they provide, which is generated when we create the Cypress, so we can customize it, right? Right, yes. So the good thing about Cypress is it comes with the framework itself, like the folder structure, yes. uh, the test, test data, everything, it comes as a ready to use. Uh, on top of that, we can customize the page objects. So yes, it's, uh, I mean, we can implement the page objects, uh, excuse me, by ourselves, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, Vinayak, one more question. Can we, uh, is there any use, any uh, architecture for the Cypress? Mm, like yes. So I, can use the Maven architecture, right? Okay. So let me share the like architecture as well. So here we can see like Cypress. Uh, no, I mean we cannot use the Maven. Maven is only for the Java platform, Java language. Uh, so here we will use the Node.js proxy. So left side we can see the web I mean the web uh, protocol, and right side we can see the browser. So when we execute the Cypress tests it will execute in the local browser. So here we can interact with the Cypress test, uh, which is uh, under iframes. So we can interact with the DOM, Windows, application Windows, local storage, uh, which means uh, cookies and uh, service worker. So here we can see the HTTP request going through proxy, which is Node.js proxy, and it talks to the web. And from web, we get the response through proxy and uh, return back to the uh, local browser. So uh, here is a simple architecture, how it works under the hood. Uh, so the, the framework, yeah. Object repository we have like that in not uh, any, we have object repository in that uh, need to maintain here. Okay, like so object a, repository, we, just we need to create the folder and we, we, we have to maintain. Okay. Yes, so it's not like a, I mean, uh, it's not a complex thing. So just we need to create some page objects from a framework, sorry, folder. And in that we can create a, like a login, uh, I mean, sign up folder, uh, sign, uh, sign up spec file, details spec file. So from there, we can store all the locators. So I will show a quick sample today, how we store the locators and how we call them in the spec files. And one question, there is any separate uh, CLI for the Cypress? Uh, you mean command line execution? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, so we can use the VS code terminal itself, local terminal. So here only we can execute the commands. So, for example, if you want to install the package, just we need to run the command and you install Cypress. Okay. Yeah. So, here uh, we can access the new terminal and uh, here we can run the, in, uh, I mean, internally we can run in the VS code. And Vitnay, we need to add this path to the main system variables or any need uh, for the yeah. node so for me, uh, Right. So, for Windows, it will be a bit tricky. We have to set up the path. Uh, Node.js path like that, Java path mm -hmm. as well. 
Mm, but for uh, I mean Mac and Linux, it's pretty simple. Just we need to install the uh, Node.js. Yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Because I missed okay. this one. Sometime I uh, I install, but uh, this path I, every time uh, like uh, not running properly. Yeah. Except so for Windows, I mean uh, I do agree. Like it, uh, the the setup is not straightforward. So mm -hmm. here, first thing is we have to install the Node.js proxy. So uh, we have better to use the LTS version, uh, long term stable version. And once we install the uh, set up the Node.js, second thing is VS Code. Sorry, yeah. Uh, any particular command to run the Cypress already if you install? Mm, yeah, so first thing is first we need to install the Cypress. Then we have okay. to open the Cypress, npx Cypress open. Uh, after that, we, I mean, the setup will be done like instantly. And then we are ready to go to start the scripts and uh, write the scripts in seconds. So yeah, the setup is pretty simple. So let me complete the like uh, one by one uh, the theory part, then sure, sure. I'll show the demo. Sure. So uh, yes, so then you'll get the clear picture. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. Vinay, one small question. Uh, so uh, what's there for mobile, mobile automation? Like uh, yeah, so as of now, we have the, I mean, Cypress comes with the web automation, uh, API mm -hmm. and database, but not the mobile automation, but we can automate the mobile view. So for example, like the resolutions, uh, iPhone resolution, uh, Android resolutions, we can customize the like viewports and we can test, but not the mobile native apps. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thanks for me. Thanks a lot. Okay, so uh, yeah, any other questions? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, yeah, for, for timing, like, uh, I mean, uh, I'll take the questions uh, after some time. So, so let's complete the uh, session. So please uh, wait for a few more minutes. Okay, so here we can see, we can test the API testing using side.trick request and DB testing using side.task command. Yeah, mobile view testing using side.viewports. So once we, like, uh, we, can, uh, we can define the iPhone 11, iPhone 12, iPhone 13, uh, like that, and uh, Android as well at the same time. And uh, we can uh, execute the node system commands, means side.task, we can execute the npm installs, I mean, all the local system commands. Excuse me. Okay, so visual testing using Cypress visual regression plugin and iframes, uh, how to handle the iframes using side.iframe. There are different packages available to handle the iframes. Okay, so uh, to install the setup, it, it's pretty simple. First, we need to install the Node.js proxy. Second thing is in Cypress. So, and the command is npm install saved Cypress for local installation. So, local means like uh, the scope of the project is, I mean, uh, the scope of the like uh, uh, the installation is up to project level only. But if you want to install global installation, so global means Mm, what are iframes? So I'll come in a later uh, stage, like once the session, regular session start. So iframes and uh, shadow DOMs are like a, uh, for example, let me show you some sample. Vinay, can you share that uh, URLs in the chart? Sure. That uh, commands. So you want to uh, start the setup now? So please wait for a few more minutes, guys. Like, uh, don't rush. Okay, so. Okay, 
So uh, what are iframes means like the, uh, here we can inspect the DOM here you can see. So uh, e all these elements are under iframe. So iframes means, so it's another component in the DOM. So uh, due to security purpose, like, uh, I mean, all the I mean, applications comes with iframes. So, I mean, it's not easy to hack when we're using the iframes. So here you can see. So if you want to interact with, uh, with this component, we have to switch to iframe using the ID. Then only we can interact with the chain elements. So for example, so here, uh, if you want to input something here, first we need to switch to the iframe, then uh, input some message. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, it's a, I mean, uh, I'm an off topic, but uh, I will cover uh, in the regular sessions. So let, let's switch back to the installation. So now let's do the installation one by one. So if you guys like interested, you can practice at the same time. Or like uh, I mean, I'll do the I'll show the setup how to install. After that, you can you guys can practice. Okay, so please uh, I mean if you guys ready, like install the Node.js proxy first, and after the uh, go to the website Node.js. So the first thing is we need to install the Node.js proxy from the website oh. Node.js.org and uh, please install the LTS version. Okay, guys, so like uh, those who are practicing today, like uh, can practice at the same time. So others, please uh, wait for a few minutes. I'll show the setup in a few seconds. So after Node.js installation done, please install the Visual Studio code. Uh, Vinayak, which file we can use like we do uh, in Maven projects, like we use pom.xml in Cypress, can we choose a file? which uh, yes. So we use the package.json file. So package.json file is the main like, uh, dependency management. So here yeah. uh, we don't use the maven or pom.xml. So yeah, uh, I'll show the npm package yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like Vinay, I have like a uh, cyber nodes package.json I open in the Visual Studio. Sorry, Shrikan. I opened this, uh, I installed the Cyberpress successfully. I opened the Cyberpress uh, in the, like a open folder. I opened Cyber Nodes in the Visual Studio code. Uh, okay, then I so, able to see like a package.json I able to see. Okay, so uh, after installation done, like, uh, yes, please wait for a few minutes. So here we can sure. see like uh, the based on the operating system, we can choose the Mac, Windows or Linux. So two things, Node.js and the uh, Visual Studio code. After that, uh, I mean, we have to create a like folder. So, so for example, here we can say I have created Cypress demo. Where we need to create that folder? Uh, I mean, the folder can be like in our local system, like a documents or a workspace. So uh, in uh, my case, I have created in the uh, training uh, folders, Cypress demo. Be before installation of the Cypress or after the in in installing of the Cypress? Uh, so it's like a workspace. So before installing the Cypress, we have to create a local folder, Cypress demo under a document, sorry, any of the folder. So it's like a, uh, I mean, some sample project. Yeah, I, mean, I already installed, I'm not created any folder. 
Uh, okay, so don't install the Cypress set, only Node.js and the Visual Studio Code. Third thing I'll show like, uh, I mean, we have to create an empty project. So, okay, let me uh, walk through the uh, installation, then uh, you guys can practice. So please wait okay. for a few minutes, yes. Okay, yeah. so here you can see I have created an empty folder to Cypress demo. Okay, <clears throat> so after, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, open the Visual Studio Code. So we need to run the command npm init. Okay, here it will ask for the, what are the package names? So some like project details. So project package name is Cypress demo. So version, we can, uh, we can keep it as a default 1.0. So description, we can say Cypress test. So entry point, we can keep it as a default index.js. So test command, we can say npm run test. Okay, Git repository, we can skip it as of now. So keywords also, we can skip it. So author, in this case, we can say Vinayak. Okay, license, we can keep it as a default, ISC. So if everything looks good, we can enter yes. So now we can see in the project, it created the package.json file. So package.json file is the main file, like a uh, maven uh, pom.xml. So here we can give the different, I mean, all the details of the project at the same time, the dependencies, what are the dependencies we have to install. So as of now, here we can see the project name, uh, what is the version, what is the description, what is the main file, what are the scripts here, npm scripts, and who is the author and uh, what is the license. So as of now, we didn't install any dependency. So that's why it's not showing here the Cypress dependency. So now we have to go through install, uh, install the Cypress. Okay, <clears throat> so the next command is npm install dash dash save dev. Save dev means a dev dependency. So I'll show the difference between dev dependency and I mean direct dependency. So always Cypress we have to install as a dev dependency. So the dev dependency means like uh, the scope of the Cypress is uh, in the uh, local and uh, not only for production, but uh, the thing is like uh, we can use it for uh, like a uh, unit testing, I mean, uh, component testing, right? So that's why we use, uh, use it as a uh, dev dependency. But when, while coming to React, Vue.js, so we have to install those package as a direct dependency. So here we can see like already one package file is created. So now we uh, created the node modules. Okay. So here you can see like uh, the installation is completed. So, I mean, uh, it's showing the added 165 packages and uh, yeah, these are just logs only. So here uh, we have the Cypress package. The latest version is 10.2.0. So previously the, uh, the Cypress is not installed. After we have run the command npm install sudo Cypress. So our package is ready. So now this is called the local installation. The same thing we can do like a global installation as well. Just we need to add the command dash g. So dash g means global. We can install in the whole system level. So if you want to, the scope of the like, uh, uh, I mean, the, pro the package is in the like global means like uh, it will apply to multiple projects. So if we have 10 projects in the system, the Cypress will apply to all the projects. But we, if we want to use only local uh, uh, installation, just we need to run the command save the Cypress. So any questions so far? <clears throat> okay, so hope you are everyone clear. So if any doubts, I mean, for now, like uh, I, I know it will be like uh, uh, starting, uh, it will be uh, like, uh, to get the hands on. So don't worry, like while starting the regular sessions, I will go through the setup once again. So I'll show from scratch to advance how to set up everything from scratch. So for time being, like, uh, let's uh, go through the, uh, I mean, the demo. Okay, so now our package is ready. Uh, here we can see left side. 
package.json file and uh, package log.json file. So log.json file is for the team sharing. So for example, I have installed Cypress 10.2.0. I want to lock the version. So while other member is working in the, in the QA team, so they have to use the same version only. They cannot use nine or uh, 10, I mean, sorry, uh, 11 like that. So if you want to lock the version, so here we have to see, we have to commit this file as well, package log.json file. So everyone in the team can use the same version uh, after that. Okay, here we can see the node modules. So node modules is the like package. So here we can see, uh, let me go up through the NPM. So here we don't have the Maven central repository, but NPM, NPM stands for node package manager. So if we need any of the package, just we need to go to the npm uh, js.com and here we, we can input the Cypress. Okay, so here we can see like the package and uh, they will give detailed documentation how to install the package and uh, other documentation as well. Not only Cypress, here we can get plenty of packages, not only Cypress, for example, Mocha. Okay. <clears throat> So uh, in this way, like, uh, I mean, NPM is like a uh, global central repository. So where we can install all the packages. So, and we can see the documentation as well. So detailed documentation. So let's take Cucumber. Okay. So here we can see like a Cypress Cucumber preprocessor. So we can automate, I mean, we can develop the framework for BDD syntax as well. So here we can see the detailed documentation, how to install the package. After that, how to configure the, uh, in the index.js file uh, and uh, how to define in the Cypress.json file and uh, other configurations. So one by one steps. So, so, I mean, the documentation is very clear for the I mean, Cypress uh, framework. So everything will be available from the NPM uh, package manager. So how to organize the test, how to write the uh, BDD files. Okay, so if you need any package, just we need to go to the uh, npmjs.com and just we need to input the package name and set. It will give like plenty of options. So what are the packages available? So from there, just now I have installed Cypress from the NPM only. From here only I have installed uh, in the local system. Uh, share the link, okay. Okay, guys, so, uh, I mean, uh, let's walk through the package now. Okay, so the next command is, if you want to uh, like open the Cypress folder, we need to run the command npx Cypress. open. So when we, when we run this command, automatically it will create the package for us, I mean, so the framework for us with all the folders. So here we can see. So this is called the test runner. So the, the test runner is open now, right side. And here is our VS code. So uh, here we can see two, like it's showing two folders. One is the end-to-end -end testing and component testing. So we can do the component testing as well using Cypress. But uh, in our, uh, our scope is like end-to-end -end testing for today. So uh, I'll show like a regular sessions how to do the component testing as well. So today our scope is end-to-end -end testing. So just we need to click on the not configured. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, it will show, uh, I mean, what are the configuration files? So cypress.config.js is the main configuration folder. So uh, here we can define the, like what are the browsers, what is the base URL, so uh, in this file. So uh, second thing is support end-to-end.js file. So for time being, like, uh, uh, I mean, uh, just uh, uh, skip all these, uh, I mean, configurations. So command.js file. So once everything is ready, just we need to click on the continue. Okay. So here we can see like three browsers available, Chrome, Electron, Firefox. So the thing is like, uh, it's ready to use, like whatever the browsers available in our local system, we can readily execute on the browsers. So in my local system, I have three browsers, but uh, I mean, Safari as of now, Cypress is not compatible, but uh, they have the roadmap for uh, Safari as well. So just we need to select the Chrome 
and start clicking end to end testing in Chrome. Okay, so now if you go to the folder, here we can see. So uh, it automatically generates a Cypress folder for us. So here we have the fixtures folder and support. So two folders. So the framework is already, uh, everything is ready to uh, execute. So fixtures folder is for the test data. So here we can see. So, uh, I mean, the name, email, body. So, and the thing, important thing is it comes with JSON format, not the X, I mean, CS, I mean, excuse me, Excel or CSV format. So by default, it, it is compatible with JSON format. Okay, now uh, the thing is like, uh, yeah, if you want to create a new spec file from, from scratch, we can create an empty spec file or it will generate the like ready to use uh, spec files as well. Just we need to click on the scaffold example specs. So we, we added the following files to your project, just okay, click on the okay, I got it. So all these files will be generated in the project now. So here we can see end to end folder. So these are the sample files. So one of, I mean, it, it will generate automatically some of the sample files just to like uh, explore the framework. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, let me recap. So once the installation is done, we have to run the command npx cypress open. So automatically it will open the test runner for us and we can choose the browser. And here uh, from once the uh, left side, we can see it, it's called the local browser. Here you can see local host. So from here, we can create a new spec file or we can generate the like sample files. Okay, so let's run the sample file now. So any questions so far for the setup? Okay, so if no questions, we can move further. Okay, so here we can see, so to do dot side dot JS. So the extensions will be always side dot JS file it means like uh, these are the spec files and executable files. So if we click on here, so here you can see like if you want to import Cypress locally. So uh, in this way, we can import the Cypress package. So reference type Cypress. So the, uh, this is called the local import. Okay, so after that, here you can see describe. Describe is from Mocha's test suite. So mock up framework. So now it's, it's kind of like a test suite. So in the describes suite, we can define the hooks before each hooks and uh, it blocks. It block represents the test case. So in the describe suite here, you can see. So example to do app, I have given the like a, a high level definition and I have created one, uh, for example, uh, yeah, it comes with automatically before each hooks. And here I have given the command side dot visit. So side dot visit means open the website. So uh, we want to open the example.cypress.io to do. So the command is site.visit means open the website. And after that, uh, here you can see it block. So each it block represents the test case. So what is the test case name? Display two to do items by default. So if you click on the website, Okay, <clears throat> so, excuse me. So here we can see like uh, two elements. So what is the first element? Pay electric bill, walk the dog. So the same thing uh, we can see here. So here we can see. So first we are trying to get the to-do list item. So uh, if you want to find any element using Cypress, the command is side.get. So get means like find element in Selenium. So, and we have to pass the locator. And another important thing is Cypress by default compatible supports CSS locator, but not the XPath. So if you want to use the XPath, then we have to install the XPath package from uh, NPM uh, package manager. Then uh, we have to define the command as a site.xpath. So usually, it, uh, I mean, uh, it starts with forward slash, right, in this format. So uh, for time being, let's go with the CSS locators. Okay, so uh, yeah, here we can see I have given the dot. Dot means uh, it represents the class name. So if we like cross check the locator, 
So Vinayak only CSS and XPath are supported. What about? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean it it is compatible with jQuery locators as well. Three locators. So CSS, XPath, and jQuery. Okay, okay, got it. Yes. So uh, here you can see. So uh, I mean we have given the dot. Dot means class name. So here we have the two elements from the list. So the same thing I have given should should means is a promise. So I have given the uh, have length property two. So uh, here is the property uh, have length. So it should have the two elements. So uh, I mean we are cross checking the how many elements here. And after that I have given uh, to do element to do list and first first means first element. So here we don't need to define the index like xpath uh, how we define. So usually we do like an index zero one uh, like this right? Excuse me. So one two three like this but in css we don't need to define in that way so just we need to call in cypress we can give the function first first element should have the label pay electric bill so uh, are you getting the concept like how we uh, identify the locators so any questions like uh, i mean please let me know okay So uh, yeah, the second element is i.get. So same, uh, I'm using the same uh, CSS locator. Uh, here, here you can see the list of element. And now I'm trying to find the last element. So here we have first element, only two. So first and last. So the last element, what is the label? Walk the dog. So the test case is completed. So uh, how many assertions we have? Three assertions. One is the length of the properties. Second thing is what is the first element and what is the last element? So let's execute only the uh, first test case using the it dot only. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, if you want to execute the, I mean, the, I mean, using the test runner first uh, after uh, like uh, done the changes. So just we need to go to the local browser. Just we need to click on the, here we can see to do side.js file. So the execution will start soon. Okay, sorry about that. So here we can see the execution is completed. So what is the example like uh, display to do items by default. So left side we can see. So here is the uh, before each. So in before each loop we have given, uh, I mean hooks we have given the open the website and here is the test case in the test body. So here we can see we can like mouse over everything and here is our uh, the list of element, how many elements do we have index and what is the first element. So first we are checking how many properties, two properties. So uh, after that, we are, we are getting the list of element and get the first element only. So here we can see right side, it's uh, highlighting. And here we are checking the label. So pay electric bill. So test case is passed. So second, it will come here, list of element. And here we want to verify the last element. So what is the next label? Yeah, should have the text label, walk the dog. So uh, here we can see like the debugging is very easy. So we can debug, uh, click on the each uh, like element and we can like uh, trace back like what, what happened in the execution. So for example, I have given here three elements. So here we can see when I do the changes and control save, automatically the execution started and here and the test case is failed now. So here we can see the list of elements, how many we have. Uh, I mean, uh, it's showing like to have length of three, but wh what is the expected got two. So, uh, I mean, here is the error logs and here we can check what is the spec file uh, it, uh, I mean, executed and where exactly it failed on, I mean, line number 27. Yes, we can generate the reports as well, like uh, using the mock awesome reports and the early reports, but as of uh, due to time constraint today, uh, I won't cover the like a detailed reports, but uh, for the regular sessions, I will show like uh, uh, multiple reports, for example, Mock awesome reports, Elliot reports, Cucumber HTML reports, and Cypress dashboard reports as well. So very detailed reports, team sharing reports as well. So Vinayak, if, if we have very large number of text tests, and if we do a save, will it turn all the tests or we can control it? Uh, yes. So the thing is like, uh, for example, let's say 100 test case in a so like to do spec file. So we can execute only what are the test cases we want. So for example, I want to execute only, uh, only five test cases. Then we have to define the 
it dot only otherwise if we don't define it dot only it will execute all the test trees which will time consume so if i like control save now you can see it is executing all the test trees okay here you can see so the test case is passed which is expected because we have given the property length 3 so first test case is failed excuse me so yeah here you can see the second test case can add two to do items so the all the other test case is passed so it's pretty fast here you can see the first test case is here uh, second test case can add two i mean can add new to do items so here we are adding the one more item to the list so the third test case is can check off an item as completed. So I mean, uh, like in this way, like we can define multiple test cases and we can execute all at a time. Or I want to like execute like only few means, then we have to de define the command it dot only. So now we have uh, executed can add new to do items. So here we can see. So before we have how many elements? Two. Now we have added added one more element called feed the cat. So only one test case executed. So in that way, like we can like uh, control the like the execution uh, from the test suite. Yes. Okay. Thank, thank you, Vinay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, I mean, so far I have just shown the sample example, right? So here is the main file, cypress.config.js file. Here we can define all the browsers, what for browsers we have to execute and what is the base URL, everything we can define here. Okay, so let me walk through the test runner here. So left side, we can see uh, the specs. If you want to check the, what are the spec files here, here you can see we can click on the spec files and here we can like uh, collapse all the, and we can expand what are the spec files here. And if you want to execute like one by one, just we need to click on the spec file. Now we want to execute on actions. So here you can see one by one it's executing and we can see the like interaction what's happening while execution, like uh, we can interact with the application as well. Vinayak, so, I did not did not get this. Where this execution is exactly happening? On is uh, it happening in the application or it is something demo? Uh, the thing is, like it's not executing in the uh, remote browser. Remote browser means like here we can see I property is opened in the remote browser, but here we can see it's executing in the local host means local uh, server. So uh, two things we have like local execution and remote execution. Remote execution while uh, it's for Selenium automatically it will execute in the remote browser uh, while execution happening we cannot inspect the dom or we cannot uh, like uh, control the browser executions but here we can see so while execution happening uh, for example uh, we can inspect the dom as well so for example so here you can see so what are the network uh, i mean calls we are calling so everything can be interactable So uh, you got the like uh, I mean, uh, scope, right? One is the local execution, one is the remote execution. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so here we can see the browsers uh, right side. So now I'm executing in the Chrome. Uh, the same thing if you want to execute on the Firefox, you just we need to select the Firefox version 95. So now we can see a Firefox is open. So, and it's executing on the local host. Okay, so here we can see that I mean the same execution happened in the Chrome and now Firefox. So all the test cases passed. Like here we can see. So number of test cases, how many test cases we have 14. So all of them passed here, green signal. So it's, uh, it executed everything in a like very short time. So we have just executed the actions. If you want to modify anything, we can go to the spec file and modify and uh, we can do the control. So automatically the execution will start. Uh, if for example, in 14 test case, uh, let's assume, um, yeah. So here to be, I have given unchecked. So we have like a, a assertion should be checked or should be unchecked. So what is the test case name? Check, uh, I mean, check a checkbox or a radio element. So let's now control C. Yeah. 
decisions very fast. Yeah, the execution will be a very, I mean, instance, like uh, here we can see already the test case is failed. So here we can see like from 14, now 13 pass one failed. So in this way, like, uh, yeah, we can go to the test case, which test case exactly failed. We can expand here. Yeah, now as of now, I'm showing the, like, uh, I mean, test runner reports only. Here we can see like, uh, here we go, uh, we can expand the reports and we can check like checkbox one, checkbox two should be unchecked. We have given, uh, which is a negative scenario, unchecked but should be checked. So here uh, the, it will give the error logs as well. The chainer unchecked was not found, could not build a session. So, I mean, we have given the like the wrong assertion and where exactly fit 150. So we can go to the 150 line and uh, let's revert back the changes and save. On right hand side, uh, we are seeing the screenshots, right? Yeah, so uh, before previously I mentioned that Cypress will automatically capture the screenshots, right? So it will uh, uh, it will save the local cache. So uh, uh, while executing execution happening, uh, all these, it will capture the screenshots. That's why we can like uh, trace back to previous logs and here you can see. So when I click on the password, it's highlighting here. So all these are screenshots. Automatically it will capture the screenshot for us and we can trace back like uh, each test case one by one. Okay, so uh, I mean, just now I have shown the examples of cross browser testing and how to execute the spec files. Here you can see, just we need to click on the specs and execute the spec files. And if you want to create a new spec file, just we need to click on the new spec file and uh, from a create a new empty spec file. So let's give sample spec dot side dot case. So once you click on the create, spec, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> so create spec file. So here we can see it will automatically generate the snippet for us. So template, uh, it will generate the described test suite and uh, it block uh, it block is a test case and it will uh, define the open the browser as well. So just we need to click on the okay, uh, run the spec or create and the spec as well. Just uh, click on the run the spec. So if you go to the spec file now, sort of folder. So here we can see just now we have created a sample spec. So either we can create from the VS code or from the test runner itself. So if you want to create a spec file from here, I mean, from here, just we need to click right and new file. So sample spec to dot cy dot yes. So how many spec files we have just now uh, one and two. So two ways, either from here, we can create from the VS code or from the test runner itself. So we, we just need to go to the specs and create the new spec file. So after that, we can start writing the scripts. Why we are using suffix as spec? Uh, sorry, could you please repeat? Uh, why we are using spec as a suffix for each GS? File? Okay, so uh, it's for naming convention. So here you can see like uh, it's better like a naming convention like uh, as a standard for framework template, right? So all the spec files should be uh, extension should be like a spec dot c dot c by dot js. So that is the standard definition of uh, I mean, creating the framework. So we, we can define, for example, without spec also. So it will still work. So in this way also we can define, but as a standard practice, better to define as a sample. So for example, login spec in this format. Okay, got it. Yes. Okay, so yeah, other than that, like uh, here we can see the version, what is the version we're using? What is the uh, Firefox, uh, I mean, the Chrome versions, Chrome and Firefox versions, excuse me, and docs. So uh, if you want to like while execution happening, if you want to go through the documentation, here we can click on the docs, here we can see how all the like doc. And so another good thing about Cypress is all the documentation will be available, ready to use. So here you can see like uh, just we need to click on the uh, write our first test. So here you can find the uh, docs.cypress.io. Everything will be available here. So we don't need to Google also. So uh, they will maintain detailed documentation. So how to write the tests here you can see. Okay. <clears throat> so any questions so far? Before that creating that folder, I run that uh, Cypress. So I am unable to find this NPM node.js and Cypress. 
in the visual code uh, are you using windows operating system yes. Okay, guys. Like, if any challenges or blockers, uh, we can connect like offline, one to one. Because for Windows, it's not straightforward. Uh, I, I mean, we have to do multiple setup. For a Mac operating system, it's pretty simple. So for Windows, like, we can connect offline. Uh, Vinayak, uh, one question about the naming convention: Is it mandatory to have cy dot js or uh, for any uh, spec files, or just dot js also would do? Is it? Uh, okay, so good question. So now Cypress migrated to 10. I mean, the latest version is like, uh, here, uh, here we can see the migration guide. So now the latest version is 10.2.0, right? So after 10.0, they have changed the some like a uh, uh, naming conventions. So all the files should be, uh, here we can see now the Cypress config file in this format and uh, other files also, they have changed the format. So it should be always uh, like a JS file, sci.js file. Okay. So uh, for the older versions, if we are using just .js, uh, uh, if we, um, even if we are not uh, upgrading the version to 10, but if we tr uh, try modifying all these changes that is implemented as a part of 10, would it work? Like, see, first thing is uh, combining config.j, I mean, config.js and uh, another file index.js right so those two is combined as one and uh, the naming convention what you mentioned if we follow these in 9.5 also would it work okay so here we can see like i'll show the difference like uh, now the right side is the uh, previous version before 10 so left side is the 10 after 10 like they have done the breaking changes so many changes like they have done in the uh, 10 version. So previously, like we are here, we can see, uh, uh, previously they have used the cypress.json file. Right side, we can see here, we can define all the configuration. Left side, we can see using the 10 version, they have changed the uh, config file to cypress.config.js. So multiple changes happen. Uh, so now we have to define in this format. So here we have to define all the configuration. So right side, uh, before 10, we, we can see. So the spec files will be in this file. We can define any any format like dot spec dot js, but now they have changed it to like side dot js. So ten here left side we can see the ten. So right side we can see the previous so nine version so spec dot js. So it, it will work. But for the latest version we have to use the format side dot js as a okay. standard practice. Yeah. Okay. So during the sessions, so don't worry, I will cover the like uh, before 10, what happened? I mean, after 10, what are the breaking changes as well? So in the 10 version, they have done multiple changes. So here we can see. So my, I mean, before what happened? So after 10, like uh, they have given the configuration files as well. So uh, once we start the regular sessions, I will cover like a detailed, uh, I mean, examples. Okay, is this version latest version still stable, Vinak? Uh, yes, so after uh, yeah, 10 is I have used it for quite some time, but it is stable, yes. Okay. So uh, guys, any questions? Uh, Vinayak, the locator that you mentioned, uh, we can pull it from somewhere else, from some external file. Uh, you mean locators? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, uh, the thing is I'll like- remember. Mac only, all members. Yes, I'm having Mac. Attend in all section, all members. No, I'm using uh, Windows. I'm using Mac as well. So for Mac, it is pretty simple. Mac, first we need to install the Node.js using the brew, homebrew. So after that, we have VS Code, uh, we can install and uh, I mean, then we are ready to go. So for Mac is pretty simple. So for uh, uh, for uh, Windows uh, operating system, I'll share the documentation. So how to set up the Node.js and uh, set up the path. Uh, yeah, it takes a time uh, time consuming. Uh, okay, so someone asked Manish asked like how to find the locators, right? So two things. One thing is manually, we can go to the website when, and we can inspect. So right click and uh, we can use the selector sub as well. Here you can see. Uh, no, no, Virag, this was not my question. My question was, uh... 
uh, since we have hard coded the locators, uh, can we can we pull it from some other file uh, so that we need not to make the changes everywhere? So right uh, now, yeah, yeah. Have, so yeah. I mean, he, I mean, today demo, right? So that's why it didn't show the page objects. So here, all the locators are hard coded. But once we go for the like regular sessions, I will show the framework as well how to create the um, page objects like. Uh, I mean, how to store the locators and uh, reuse the locators as well. So these are the sample files. So that's why everything is hard coded here. Okay. Okay. Yes. So once we start the regular, I mean, uh, I mean training, training sessions, I'll show the page object model. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, those who are, uh, I mean, are interested, let me ping me offline, like uh, for the regular sessions, we can start from next week and onwards. So as of now, I, I, I mean, due to time constraint, I, I couldn't cover everything, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I will cover all the frame. I mean, like a page object model, Cucumber, BDD, and mock mock-up framework, how to uh, use the reports, how to generate, uh, generate the custom reports, how to integrate with CACD pipeline, Jenkins, uh, Bitbucket pipeline, uh, I mean, GitHub actions. So multiple things, not only like, uh, uh, I mean, sample concepts, I will cover like advanced concepts as well. How to do the database testing, API testing, uh, how to do the GraphQL queries, REST, REST API testing. So like all the like, uh, I mean, uh, advanced topics as well. So guys, like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, those who are working on the windows, like, uh, uh, please ping me offline. So I will show the setup as well. So for time being, like, uh, let's wrap up the session. And uh, if you want to like automatically locate the locate, I mean, find the locators, it's pretty simple. Here you can see Cypress playground. So here you can see. So once we click on this icon, so we can use the Cypress playground to capture the locators for us. So Cypress will automatically generate the locators for us. Here you can see. So just we need to copy the locator and reuse in the uh, scripts. So here you can see. So just we need to call the locator and click on it. So it, it's pretty simple. So uh, the one thing is uh, we can find from the website or we can use the Cypress playground to inspect the locators and find the uh, generate the I mean, uh, automatically use the locators generated. Uh, Vinayak, I have one more question. Uh, do we have any challenges in maintenance, maintaining the project if it becomes large? If we, if we have like thousands of tests, will it become? See. So uh, that's why like from beginning, we have to take the steps. So uh, how to store the locators, how to generate the reports. So once we customize the framework, it will be easy. But if we hard code everything like this, it will be uh, troublesome in the future. So starting, we have to take care of all the, all the best practices. Then the framework maintenance will be easy. Even though like hundreds of thousands of spec files, once the framework, uh, the structure is designed, it will be like a, not, a, I mean, not a challenge in the future. Okay, and also in terms of execution, uh, uh, will it be still uh, fast as it is right now with a like low number of tests? Mm, yeah, from your experience, I'm just asking. Yes, so um, uh, I mean, as far as I know, like uh, if we have thousand hundreds of test cases also, so using the Cypress like uh, uh, orchestration, so they have the machines like we can use the Selenium grid concept, we can distribute the like uh, those. Uh, thousands of test cases into multiple machines. We can like create a, uh, like a multiple four to five machines and we can distribute like 200 in test case in one machine like that. So we can do the load balancing and orchestration and uh, we can execute the like, uh, uh, I mean, all the spec files in short time, yes. Got it. And uh, in these different machine can run same test in parallel and also we can distribute so set uh, okay. Two, so the, uh, the distribution will take care by the orchestration. So we cannot like uh, manually control it. For example, if we have hundred test cases, it will distribute like thirty in the, uh, machine one, uh, twenty second uh, machine two like that. It will automatically distribute the test cases. Okay, got it. And in in machine one, can we also distribute in multiple browsers? Uh, yeah, we can do. So that one we have to do some configuration. Uh, we can do cross browser testing, for example, like Chrome. Uh, that is a uh, uh, that is a bit challenging. We have to do some setup, not straightforward. Yeah, but it's possible. Yes. Okay, and also we can integrate with Docker. 
Docker as well. So like uh, not only Docker, we can integrate with browser stack, source labs, and we can do like cross browser testing as well. I mean, sorry, parallel testing as well. Okay, got it. Thank you, Vinayak. Yes. Uh, so like, uh, yeah, I mean, today, like uh, due to time constraint, like I cannot show the, uh, the demo, right? But uh, those who are interested for the regular sessions, please do contact me. Like, uh, I mean, I, I will cover like uh, all the setup, like uh, how to set up the Docker, how to uh, integrate with the browser stack, source labs for parallel testing. And uh, yeah, so multiple things, yes. Okay. So uh, yes, Preeti, I'll share all the documents in the WhatsApp group, yes. And also we can interact with the MongoDB. Uh, yeah, we can uh, integrate with MongoDB using the MongoDB connector. Yes. And uh, share, Vinay, uh, share the, this record also as well if you... Can sure, sure. I'll share the recordings and all the documentation as well. Everything in WhatsApp. Share yes. In the WhatsApp group, I'll share the, like, all the details. Yes. Sure. Thanks, Vinay. Class. So any questions, guys? Yes, Vinay, one, one more question. So uh, if, if time permits, uh, can you give a little bit of comparison between Cypress and Karate? Because Karate also comes up with, I'm not, uh, I, yeah. I, I know this is off topic. Uh, yeah. So you can keep also, no problem. Yeah. So Karate is like a uh, BDD uh, framework. So they also come up with the uh, UI automation API. But the usage is comparing to less, uh, while comparing to Cypress is like, uh, we can say 75%, 80% companies using, but currently very few companies I can see. So only 10% I can see like uh, very few requirements also. Uh, Vinayak, uh, this TypeScript Karate, uh, my brother working at Apple is using presently. Okay. Mobile automation of TypeScript, I don't know. They do, doing r and backend these things. Uh, <clears throat> karate, uh, if you ask me, like, I'm not much experience on Karate, but I have done the like uh, AP automation as well, uh, AP automation only, yes. So, uh, so can we do the cookie injections to do the login part? So uh, this is what I want to uh, achieve. Like uh, if we want to test some UI, I will yes. reach a page, particular page directly using some APIs and I will start my UI test from there onwards. So to make it faster. So for example, let's skip the login using API, not skip, do the login using API and then start from, for example, dashboard page. Right. Uh, so right. Uh, good question. So we can do two things. Like we can call the API call or we can create a session cookie, session management. And one time we can log in and it's each uh, the same session we can apply to hundred test case using the Cypress cookie session management case. Yes. Okay, got it. That is, means it is achievable. Yeah. It is achievable, yes. So one-time session login, uh, we can store the session ID cooking and uh, reuse the same session ID for hundreds of thousands of test cases. Okay. Uh, Vinak, one question about the framework. Uh, I, or if I have a, a framework that is already working for a UI, uh, can I use the same framework for the API too? Under the integration, uh, create another fo uh, folder for API and continue using the same, all the command or JS and like everything the same. Mm, or do uh, I have to create a uh, fresh yeah. new So uh, no, no, better to maintain the sing uh, single framework for API and UI. So uh, mm -hmm. the thing is like, if you want to do multiple layers of testing in the UI layer, so we can, uh, I mean, continue for example, uh, API here as, uh, as well. So uh, we can do the like uh, UI integration and API calls in the spec file, or we can create another folder in the end to end, uh, we can create a folder for API as well. So in the same framework, we can, I mean, we can continue with the API tests as well, yes. So no need to maintain two frameworks. So it okay. will be like a double uh, double task, right? Yes. Yeah, correct. Okay. Okay, guys. So we can wrap up the session for today. So any questions we can offline, uh, we can discuss in the WhatsApp group. And those who are interested for a, like a regular session batches, let me know. So I can start, I mean, uh, add you in the group and uh, we can like connect uh, every weekend, like Saturday and Sunday. And uh, how many uh, days this course? Uh, so I will cover, uh, it will take like five to six weekends. Six weekends. Six weekends around. Okay. 
Vinay, can you add? I, I want to thank you. Uh, this was super useful. I have a lot of ideas now. Um, I'll start exploring this by myself. I would like to be added to your group. I don't know where to sign up, so I will write you offline, okay? Uh, okay, Lina, we can catch up offline, yes. Okay, thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Uh, Vinay, can you add me in the WhatsApp group? Uh, just a second, guess. I'll share the WhatsApp group uh, in the chat as well. Sure. WhatsApp group, right? Codeless, that only, right, Vinay? Uh, not Any in the codeless. Uh, there is another group. Uh -huh. Okay. <clears throat> so please join in the I mean, WhatsApp group. So the thing is like... Uh, I'll share in the codeless as well. So a codeless group as well. You shared in codeless also, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll share in the codeless group as well. Yes. To reach everyone. Yes. Mm -hmm. So okay. thanks everyone, guys. Like uh, I need to catch up with the another session. So okay. let's discuss but, offline. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I'm unable to see your message in the codeless. Uh, please check in the chat box, like I have shared in the chat box. Before class only? No, no, no today class. Today class only. Okay, thank you, Vinay, for your time. Thanks, thank guys. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, a lot, Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining. Thank you.